So I'm just putting loading up the gun. So this is a disposable needle cartridge. It comes in a five or nine needle variety. And because I'm doing the back of the hand here, I'm using a five needle variety. This is a DECA Smart Side Squared Fractionated CO2 laser. Uh, it's a resurfacing laser. Uh, it's a very versatile piece of equipment that enables me to um, do a fractionated treatment, which means I'm not taking away the whole surface of cake skin. I'm actually removing about 13% of the skin surface, and then I'm causing heating of the surrounding areas there. So what the effect of that will be is will be to burn away some of the abnormal tissue on the surface and then stimulate collagen production because of each of those little burns. So this is the best way we have to rejuvenate the surface of the skin um, on Kate's hands. Um, resurfacing has been done on the face for many years, since the 80s, and originally it was done with lasers which took the whole of the surface of the skin away, which gives a very good result, but there's a long downtime and a potential for complications. So in the last 15 to 20 years, um, we've produced fractionated lasers, and a fractionated laser doesn't burn the whole of the skin surface, but burns a series of little dots or channels into the skin. And the difference is between each little uh, burn or laser, laser area and the next one, there's a little bridge of normal untreated skin. So these bridges heal the dots from the sides rather than the skin having to heal from below. And what that means is we cut our downtime down from a few weeks to a few days and we reduce the risk of complications. But it does mean that we, because we're only treating a fraction of the skin surface, or in other words, we're splitting the treatment into fractions, we have to repeat this treatment two or three times to get the same type of result we would have been able to get with a single treatment before. Um, one thing with that though is full resurfacing was only ever able to be done on the face because areas like the backs of the hands and the neck and chest would not, re um, the skin won't regenerate from below entirely. So this type of laser can be used on hands and necks and chests, whereas the original resurfacing lasers couldn't. These are used to protect your eyes. Okay, that's one hand. As it heals, that way it doesn't look like such a kind of glove that's on there. Okay, so I'm going to use PRP in this situation now as a wound dressing. So we've got a freshly lasered area of skin and we've got our plate rich plasma. And we're just going to drizzle that onto the skin and it will soak into all the tiny little laser burns like it's being soaked up by a sponge. The platelets will then lodge in these little burns and they'll release their growth factors and that will set up a, an accelerated healing process in the skin. It also shortens the downtime and it also soothes the discomfort of the time. So if Kate's hands were stinging and feeling quite hot now, the PRP that I'm putting on there now will act as a soother as well. It will tend to settle it down. We're saying we can use PRP in many ways. We can inject it into the surface of the skin like we were just doing with the neck and in the hands. We can use it as a wound dressing topically afterwards. And we can also inject it deep into the skin, into the fat pads to create a form of revolumization. So what we do is we feel for the supraorbital notch and you can feel it very clearly in Kate there. And it's level with the inside of the iris, the medial limbus. And then this is 2% lignocaine plane with no adrenaline. And so what we do is we Okay, what I need you to do is to tell me if you feel anything electric or like an electric shock, okay? So I palpate the notch, I put the needle straight down, simply through the skin until I touch the bone. And then I'm just going to inject right off there. And put in two mils of plain lignocaine. Seems like a fair bit, but it's going to do the job. Yeah, so we're doing the scalp now, 
uh, we're injecting platelet-rich plasma. Now in this situation, we want to inject it down in amongst the, uh, the bulb of the hair follicles, uh, which are at least five millimeters down. With this injecting device, we can gauge the depth, we can set the depth of injection anywhere from about half a millimeter to five millimeters. Uh, so we're using maximum depth of injection at five millimeters. Um, this gun produces a suction to pull the skin up, but there's no point doing that on the scalp because this, the hair will stop that. So we're turning the suction off and we're injecting reasonably large doses of the PRP with each thing because we're trying to flood the hair follicles with PRP. To the Okay, now we're going to do some lip rejuvenation. So we're going to, first off, we put some local anesthetic cream on the lips. And now I'm going to inject some platelet rich plasma into the lips. And that's what I've got here. And then I'm going to use the, um, the remaining platelet rich plasma as a wound dressing on the outside of the lips. So I'm going to put this in like I would do a lip filler, just into the various areas. So here, this is called the vermilion border. It's the border of the lip. And I'm injecting the PRP into the border to try and give us a crisper lip line. And then a little bit into the body of the lips. We're now doing lip rejuvenation, okay? And we put some platelet rich plasma, we've injected that into the lips, into the vermilion border, into the body of the lip, like we would with a lip filler. And now we're going to use the fractionated CO2 laser to do a minor resurfacing procedure of the outside of the lip, which will help to improve the color, rebuild the lip line, uh, and just generally make the lips look more youthful. So I'm just going to wipe the remaining local anesthetic off there. Now, how is that? How sore is that? It's okay. It's doable. I agree the lips don't actually don't look bad, all things considered. What we've just done to you. But the nice thing about this is it improves the colour and the texture, gets rid of the chapping and gives you a more kind of youthful pinker colour and just looks better, moister. And lips are, as we were saying, you know, very um yeah, very important feature on someone's face that they look healthy and they look fresh and all that. Right, so today we've done quite a few things on Kate. Um, we've done a complete PRP rejuvenation of her neck and chest. Um, we've also done some laser and PRP rejuvenation of our hands. We've done hair thickening and restoration treatment on her scalp. And we've also done some lip rejuvenation. So from the point of view of the neck and chest, that's purely plate the rich plasma. That will now soak in. She's got very few bruises there. There might be a tiny little bruise. Most of that redness and that, um, that mottling will be gone in one to two days. Tomorrow there might be a few little red marks there, but largely they'll be gone in a couple of days. Um, the results will start within about 10 days to two weeks. Kate should start to feel a moistness or a dewiness to the skin, uh, which is a feeling kind of slight numbness, dewiness that happens. And then the, uh, as the blood flow increases and the skin gets healthier, the results will improve. And the maximum result after this kind of treatment will be at, at about three to six months. With the backs of Kate's hands, we lasered those as well. So the surface skin is actually going to dry up into these tiny little scabs. That process will take about three or four days and then they will, the, the um, hands will start to peel. So before that, they'll feel a little bit like sandpaper like they do now, and then that will peel off along with a lot of the pigmentation and freckling, and the hands will then be pink. And that pinkness might take another three to four weeks to settle down completely after a laser treatment like this. Once again, there's four phases of wound healing. So there's hemostasis, which is the first couple of days, then a settling inflammation as the redness dies down. It's only after that point that we get collagen stimulation, and then from there onwards, collagen remodeling. So the whole process of healing after a laser treatment like this goes on for somewhere uh, up to six months. Um, with, a laser, with a fractionated laser, because we've really only treated about 13% of the skin surface there, it would be best if Kate could come back and have a second or even a second and third treatment within the next few months. Um, and that's not a difficult thing with hands. So ideally two to three treatments within a six month period, and then we'd be looking at doing a top up treatment every year or two. Uh, from the point of view of the hair restoration, uh, Kate can wash her hair normally tonight. There's a little bit of blood there from the needle pricks. That will wash out fine. She might be a little bit sore on the scalp tomorrow. There might be a few little sore places to touch, but there should be no other, other downtime, other problem with that. Um, as we were saying, 
uh, before, hair restoration is a long-term process. So what we're relying on here is for the platelets to release growth factors to stimulate blood vessel growth. And that blood vessel growth is then going to nourish the follicles that are there, enable them to grow bigger and stronger hairs. At the same time, we're kicking some of the dormant follicles into life, and we're also causing the hairs to stay in the hair follicle for a longer period, so grow longer before they fall out. All of those effects are fairly long-term effects. So Kate should see improvements in her head hair. She might start to notice that in about two to three months. And once again, the maximum result after these treatments would be in six to 12 months. But ideally, it would be, uh, it would be good for her to have two, another one or two treatments to the scalp over the next few months to get the maximum result with this treatment. Uh, from the point of view of the lips, they've been lasered and the PRP's been on there. Um, she needs to be careful with the lips for the next couple of days and use a silicon wound dressing, which uh, we'll give her, like a lip balm over there. The lips will then peel after about two or three days as well. A lot of that swelling you can see there now will go in the next 24, 48 hours or so. The lips will peel and once again, there will be a settling inflammation, then a collagen stimulation, and the maximum result Kate will get with her lips will be in about three months time. Um, so no real particular aftercare. Uh, with the lasered areas, it's important, the lips and the hands, to keep them moist until the, the, they peel, so over the next few days. And as I say, we use a silicon ointment for that. From the point of view of the PRP, there's really no downtime and no real aftercare at all.